It's been an interesting year so far. How have business aircraft sales weathered the first six months of 2023? And what's the forecast for the remainder of the year? From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for the very latest business aviation news and information. And let's jump right into our discussion, as there is a fair bit of ground to cover on the current state of the business aircraft market. Zapora Marmer is Vice President of Aircraft Transactions at ACAS and Board Chair for the International Aircraft Dealers Association, or IATA. Zapora, how has the sales environment for business aircraft changed or evolved over the past six months? And has it tracked with your initial predictions for the year? We knew that 2023, we'd face a little bit of a more rational, calmer market than we saw at the end of, uh, you know, throughout 2022 and even in 2021. Uh, And that has been the case so far. It's been an interesting last few years, uh, frankly, in aviation from the start of COVID to the incredible heights we've seen in, in the last couple of years to the relative quiet of 2023. But I do think it is relative and that we'll start to see a a pickup in activity in the second half of this year. Also joining me is Roland Vincent, president of Roland Vincent Associates and creator and director of JetNet IQ. What are your thoughts, Raleigh? Well, we had been anticipating the changing market that Zipporah just talked about. So yeah, I'd say no real big surprises, maybe a little bit on on valuations. I think values have held up a little bit better than uh, we had anticipated. So that's good news. Rounding out our panel is Par Avion founder and president Janine Iannarelli. Janine, has the year progressed as you expected, or have there been any curveballs thrown in there? To some degree. I mean, I think very early Q1, January, with my clients, it was take a wait and see attitude. We felt that there had to be a cool down period after the very dramatic finish to 2022. And I think, as everyone has already noted, the to the end of the pandemic buying, as it has been called. As far as a curveball, I think the one that really kind of shook everyone up and put the market on pause for part of April was the banking crisis in March, because the question is too, is there going to be further fallout? That seems to have settled a bit. I think some uh, recent conversation in the financial marketplace has sort of soothed everyone's nerves. I mean, one of the most interesting that I'm now starting to hear is that maybe inflation is going to be a non-event. Maybe we're already seeing the max of it. And perhaps we're going to have that soft landing that people were hoping for. Hopefully that'll bear out. The Federal Reserve's recent pause on interest rate hikes was an encouraging sign that inflation may finally be easing. What other factors are influencing purchasing decisions? The more experienced buyers, especially those that I help seller aircraft during the peak period believes that they should wait it out a little bit longer because prices are going to continue to correct. Now, the real question I think is to what degree will they correct? And I've already voiced this in a public forum that if prices were to correct to what we saw just prior to the pandemic, 2019, is that not still a win for the vast majority of the marketplace? Raleigh, I know you have some thoughts about the recent debt ceiling crisis and its effects not just on our industry, but the global economy. How might that influence business aircraft sales going forward? I think this was a self-inflicted wound, or could have been. Uh, Thankfully, we avoided it. The uh, politicians gathered around and and got some work done. That was very encouraging. Frankly, I think it was a little bit of a fishbowl issue, and and, uh, it was going to get resolved. There's no question, in my mind at least. So I, th- I think that's that's kind of behind us. The challenges right now in 23 continue uh, to be the same as they were in 22 relating to supply chains. I mean, aerospace and aviation supply chains are still struggling. That's a labor issue, and it's not a something that we have a solution to right now, and uh, we may not for years, especially now as we look at the ramp up of the commercial and military aerospace markets. We're in a conflict environment, of course, now, but also people are traveling, uh, you know, on the uh, commercial airline side. So that suggests ramp up of uh, activity on the other sides of aviation, if you like, and, and of course, even more strain on labor and supply chain. 
Zipporah, I'd appreciate your perspective on this as well, not only from the aircraft management and broker side, but also what you might be hearing from IATA members about this current sales environment. IATA broker members must submit monthly transaction and activity reports, which track their the concrete sales data as well as their opinions on the market. We publish this information quarterly. So I'll refer to the first quarter 2023 market report, which did see a reduction in the number of deals closed in Q1 2023 of about 17% compared to the first quarter of 2022. Interestingly, we also tracked the number of aircraft under contract, and that was down about 20% year over year compared to last year. So there definitely is a cooling of the market, a rationalization of the market, and we're eager to see what the second quarter 2023 report will bring, and that's due out July 17th, so we'll know soon enough. More with our guests in just a moment, after this quick message from NBAA. NBAA Flight Plan listeners, your podcast is ready everywhere. You can download it from iTunes, ask your smart speaker to give you a listen, or hear it in any car with Apple's CarPlay. NBAA Flight Plan, available anytime, anywhere. We're back now with Janine Iannarelli, Raleigh Vincent, and Zipporah Marmer, and our conversation about the state of the business aircraft sales market as we look toward the remainder of 2023. Zipporah, what does the most recent IATA market report tell us about how aircraft prices have responded to this market? If we look at the number of transactions with lowered prices, we had 52 out of our 239 in the first quarter of 2023 with a reduced price compared to only six in the same period a year ago and 27 in the first quarter of 2021. So there is a reduction in pricing happening. That said, I think it's hard to provide a generalized response because it is a model by model situation. Sellers are still trying to keep for the most part 2022 pricing in place. Buyers are trying to push towards 2024 pricing, and sometimes we're having a hard time meeting in the middle and getting a a deal done. Janine, what are you saying? Well, I think it's a natural response. I mean, it it is to some degree economic supply and demand as the number of units of available aircraft have increased. There's a price correction going on. I tend to agree with Sephora that it is model by model specific though I think that will be overtaken by a need to adjust pricing across the board as we move further into 2023. You know, my bigger concern as to where we go with pricing is not just the unprecedented ramp up in value, because to some degree it was warranted. When you have very limited supply, high demand, a need, then that's reflective of where pricing should be. It doesn't matter what the asset is that's being sold. And the same with the downward trend now in pricing as that supply increases, the demand has dropped off. I I focus more on the messaging when it comes to pricing. I mean, I I always hearken to the um, American Marketing Association, which I've been a longtime member of, and their creed that if price were the only thing that sold anything, why would we need salespeople? So I think the key is to focus on the value proposition and adjust the price accordingly. Raleigh, how are you seeing that price versus value equation play out in this market? We've seen a step up in demand for what we do. Business aviation, I think, despite some of the challenges that we do face as an industry, I think the industry, we've taken a step up in demand. And I think that's a permanent change. I think more and more people have accepted and have embraced our industry. They're experiencing our industry. And uh, this is really probably the only good thing that came out of the pandemic. It accelerated the acceptance of business aviation. And of course, there are other external factors in play as well, including the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. For sure. I mean, Ukraine is a land war in Europe, which we haven't seen in so long. I mean, obviously, a dramatic situation. Taiwan is the other one, of course. Uh, we don't like to focus on these things. We don't control them. They they happen. They sort of unravel quickly. So it's good to see the Chinese and U.S. governments getting together in uh, Beijing. Uh, that's very encouraging. So the geopolitical issues are always there. They are a little bit more uh, prominent right now than they've been, which is alarming, actually. 
And uh, we'll just see where that plays out. But back where aircraft are flown, Western Europe and North America, Latin America, etc., our economies are, I think, doing quite well. And people embrace this industry. It's really encouraging. I have to echo Roly's sentiment with regards to geopolitical concerns. I mean, that always, when there's saber rattling going on or threats, has ramifications in the global marketplace. And I think the Russian-Ukraine ongoing conflict cannot be ignored. I mean, it's a real drag on operations, particularly for those based out of Europe with the roundabout routes they have to take. Another concern that I have going forward is the whole climate discussion, climate net zero. And it's not so much the steps that the industry is taking because I think we're making great strides and I think we've demonstrated such over a period of time. It's the fact that the messaging is not necessarily being listened to by the people who want to raise awareness. So I I think fine tuning, building the bridge in relations and demonstrating even further to an audience that shows aviation is approaching those goals exponentially, if you will. I mean, especially if you look at the improvements that have made in the last 10 to 15 years. I know it's not fast enough for some people, but it's further along than other industries. Zipporah, what are your thoughts? I agree with uh, both Janine and Roly in the issues they just discussed. We're also seeing labor shortages being a real issue uh, and rising costs for retention. So whether that's a crew issue with several of our clients either having a hard time keeping their crew at a reasonable salary or finding crew in the first place, or whether that's an OEM or an MRO for the skilled labor they need to get the work done. Supply chain issues also are are still impacting us with certain parts having very long lead times. We needed a new windshield for a certain type of aircraft and were literally quoted two years to get that windshield. So that is impacting our operations. I think these issues are longer term issues. I don't think we're going to see much change for the remainder of the year. These are not going to be resolved in six months, but hopefully we're chipping away slowly at them and getting into a stronger and stronger position. The supply chain crisis is certainly a lingering dilemma for our industry. Might we see any progress on that or other issues in the next six months? We are working hard, as Janine mentioned, on addressing the sustainability issues and the environmental concerns that are being raised. It's a question about education. And as an industry, we are taking it very seriously. uh, And we're trying to address the matter uh, head first. And I think we will keep seeing more and more gains, especially on that front. Yeah, getting the word out does seem to be the bigger issue here. Janine? A PR campaign would be warranted that puts forth the facts, the numbers, the comparisons, enough information out there. And I don't mean just directing it at those people who are raising the argument, but the broader public. So they understand that there is a discussion that's going on. There is positive movement and an investment in a greater PR campaign. I think the aviation industry has for decades told each other very well the story of how aviation benefits the community. But now we need to really emphasize pushing that message out to the average person. And all this certainly makes for an interesting time to be selling business aircraft. Janine, what advice do you have for aircraft buyers and sellers in this environment? Let's start with the approach to the marketplace if you are going to buy or sell and information is key. You need data in order to assess the value of your asset in the current market environment and what it might look like in the near term. And to do that, you need an aircraft sales professional to assist you. This is not a matter of one where it's easy enough to advertise the aircraft and you're going to have buyers lining up. Those days are over. So you need the professional guidance. That is the first step, in my opinion, in moving forward in the sales environment. As far as addressing the need to achieve net zero and to reduce the carbon footprint. I mean, I think everyone needs to be mindful of that. And that extends itself not just to the operation of the aircraft, but, you know, right back to the offices that we all occupy. How are we in some small way all contributing to the reduction of the CO2 output? And there's a lot more research going into that. There are some new companies coming forward with uh, ideas and solutions to help with a total 
environmental solution. Let me just bring up two other things. The investment landscape for the future in terms of mergers and acquisitions, are we going to see further consolidation? And what about the elephant in the room about several large operators that are facing some challenges? That I think is going to weigh heavily on the resale marketplace. Indeed. Sapora, what tips would you share with prospective business aircraft buyers and sellers? The advice that I give my clients uh, in this market is the same that I give them in, in every market, quite frankly. Do your homework, know what you're getting into, and transact fairly. As an aircraft operator and not only a broker, at ACAS, we deal with a lot of the data and figures surrounding the entire purchase, not just the actual cost of acquisition, but the operating costs, the maintenance costs, anything that might be coming due, et cetera. And this is all critical information for a client to know before making a purchase or before switching into a different aircraft or a different mode of transport, let's say. So it's about knowing what you're getting into, knowing the numbers and proceeding with your eyes wide open. Raleigh? I think more than anything, we've realized that this is a trust-based business. We've got a very complex and infrequent transaction. It requires professionals. And I think more than any time, this is the time to engage professionals who know what they're doing, have been around the track before. And the two ladies on this call, I would highly recommend for that. And when selecting an aircraft purchasing agent or broker, be sure to also check out the NBAA Aircraft Transactions Guide for additional guidance about completing an aircraft transaction. Developed by members of NBAA's tax committee, the guide provides insights about the regulatory, tax, financial, and transactional issues that come together during an aircraft acquisition. It can be found at nbaa.org forward slash transactions. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking your virtual assistant or connected device. Of course, you can also download Flight Plan directly from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and be sure to join us next time for a new episode of Flight Plan. Right, uh, we got him inside. We're slowing back to 170.